if you guys want your render, render to look from this to this, then stay tuned and I will show you with my tutorial on how to make some very easy cinematic fog. You can also download the project file from the description below. Uh, you'll just have the material already ready to use if you'd like. But if not, just stick around to the tutorial and I'll show you how to do it and how to use it. And I think you'll be glad you've learned it. If you'd like to support the channel, feel free to subscribe to Patreon or, you know, grab me a coffee or something. I don't know. Okay, guys. So what I've got here is I've got my Unreal Engine uh, 5.2. Actually, I'm using for this one. Um, I've got my Ice Tutorial map open, which you can actually find on my Patreon for free if you if you want to basically get it. Uh, but I'm going to use this map uh, since it's a very good map. This, but by the way, this tutorial does work in Unreal Engine 5.3, 5.1, 5.0. I think it will work for 5.4. So uh, what we need to do to begin here is to add a shape. So what we're going to use is going over here to this plus button, having a look at um, shapes and then just dragging, dragging in a sphere. So I recommend using a sphere, but you guys can use whatever you'd want. Just get a sphere in here and make it um, quite big, maybe something like that, just so we can start seeing the, the sort of the fog. And this sphere automatically comes with a basic shape material. I wouldn't recommend you guys start changing that. You should just make your, a, a new material instead of using the Unreal Engine basic material. So we're going to go over here, control space, and I'm just going to make a new folder. I'm going to call it um, Easy Fog and just going to open that. In here, I can uh, create a new material, M Fog, and then we can double click it and this will open the material panel. So we can bring the material panel in here and we have our material uh, node. So what we're going to do in here, we're going to be changing this from a blend mode of opaque to a uh, translucent material. And that's important because otherwise we won't be able to use what would, you know, see through the fog, make it um, have an opacity and so on. And with that done, we can actually go over here and apply it. So if we use select it here in the content browser and press this button, it will apply it. But this is applying the actual material. So it would be better if you right click it and create a material instance and add this instead to the sphere. And you'll see why uh, later. Now, if we go back to our material over here, we can start adding some nodes. And the main driving factor that, you know, makes this effect uh, possible is the radial gradient exponential. So we have this node that we can add. Everybody has it. If you right click, you can find it and, you know, type in and find it. And we've got a few things in here that we need to tell it. Uh, first of all, we want to, make, you know, be able to control the a gradient to create, um, you know, the fog and give it some a sort of color. Uh, we would also like to be able to, you know, uh, use an opacity mask based on that gradient to make sure that it's, you know, fading, a, fading away where it's, uh, uh, you know, we're masking it basically. Um, and we're also going to use um, a depth fade in order to make it so that it disappears when it gets quite close to meshes. So you'll see what happens if we don't. So, for example, we could take this and put it straight into the opacity over here. Now, currently, you can see, I mean, it's already doing something. So if we apply it and we go back in here, you'll notice that it's sort of doing something but you can't really see what it's not really you know it almost looks like a snow globe at the minute but yeah we, we're not really seeing uh, much so what we want to do now is start playing with these parameters so the first thing we want to do is about the radius so i'm gonna hold s on the keyboard and, plus, and press left click and this will create a scalar parameter and i can call this radius i'll um, link it over here into the radius value um, then I'm go I've got a density over here, so I'm going to S and then create one, you know, call it density, not des density, but density. Um, and then we can put that into the density over here. Now in here we could say, do we want to invert the density of the radial? Yes or no. So we could actually look for a static bool uh, parameter. So we could name that invert uh, density like that so we could put it in there so if we tick this box it will invert it if we don't it will you know what i mean like right now it's not inverting it uh we don't have to put anything in the uv or center position now we're going to press apply have a look back at the material and now everything is gone as you can see and that's because we've got values of zero zero so what we need to do 
is with the sphere selected double click this material over here or you could just double click it over here which will open the material instance so i'm just going to drag it out and go back in here so i can now see that i could play around with the density i could play around with the radius so you can see that's what the radius is doing and that's what the density is doing so we could add i don't know a density of 10 or something like that and now you can see what it's happening what is happening okay but we're going to drive this through a noise so i am now going to go back into our material over here uh, let's just push to put this to one side for now um we have yet to add a base color but we're going to do that in just a little bit again using this radial exponential um radial, radial exponential so let's let's do that let's just add a color and then play around with actually getting the noise to control the fog all right let's get going so we're going to right click over here and search for a desaturation node like that and we can use this as a method of control of the color so we're going to add a um you know press three on the keyboard left click and this will add a color node in here uh, and then we can right click and convert to a parameter and we're going to call this fog hint like that and then we can take um you know this um, this connection and put it over here and then in here in the fraction we can add a new scalar parameter so we could call this the saturation control something like that and then we could plug this over here into the fraction node and that's it for that. Now we can multiply between the radiant and this desaturation node. And this in theory could go straight into the base color like that. And we can press apply. Obviously we don't have any color in here. So I'm gonna change this to white for now and press apply. Now in here, you can see that we've now changed the radial fog to, sorry, the, that, that, yeah, that radial gradient, we changed it to white. You can see it's got a nice sort of like you know it's like a smooth sort of step there um now we we obviously can change the color by the way so if we go into the material over here and we select the fog tint we can now change this to whatever we want which is quite useful it just gives us a, a you know another measure of control over there um now with that done it's time to uh, work on the noise so i'm going to search for noise and we're just going to add it in now you can change what type of noise we can use so we're going to go for a fast gradient free detection noise like that and we're going to use the noise as an alpha for where the you know where where it's visible so uh, what we're going to do now i am going to add a um interpolate so linear interpolate node that one there and we can yes take this noise and put it into the alpha we can take the base color from over here, you know, this multiply and connect it like that and leave this to one and we can connect it in the base color. Now, if we press apply now, you'll notice that this is what the noise is currently doing, which is not exactly what we want. We need to be able to, to change it a bit more, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press A on the keyboard to add an add node. And then I'm also going to uh, search for an append node, which is just an append vector node. And what we're trying to do here is get some texture um, coordinate. So we can use a texture coordinate, connect that into the append node, and then a value, this value we need here to be a value of zero. So I'm just going to uh, keep one press and left click to add a normal value. Going to put that in there in the B value, in the B slot, and I'm going to connect this to the B slot of the add value, and this over into the position. Now over here, we can now start adding some time. So we're going to search for time. And we're going to connect this to a... Uh, for now, we're going to connect it over here and just see how that works. I'm going to press apply. And I'm going to have a look. And you can see now what it's sort of doing, right? How it's changing things. Uh, we could go into our material over here and have a look at the radius. And, you know, we could increase that radius further like that. Maybe bring it like that. So that's also interesting to do. Uh, we also got this desaturation color, which, by the way, won't really do much if you don't actually have a color. So, you know, leave it to zero for now. Uh, let's just go back into our material over here because we've got to control that time somehow. But we also have to play with this opacity to make sure that when it's meeting with objects, it sort of like fades away. So we're going to search for a depth fade node. So this is the one here. And we need to multiply between the radial and the depth fade and connect this into our opacity node but we've got to give this um, a depth fade which is going to create two more parameters so we're going to call this opacity and this one fade um sorry fade distance like that 
and then connect these two so we we've, we've got some you know some numbers in there normally you want to put a value of one to each of them just so you know for control's sake and we can now press apply we have a look again at the material you know basically you can see in here how it's sort of like running away from the mesh so if we take this in again and we increase the fade distance and the opacity if i increase the fade distance this this in theory will make it sort of like blend away from where the shape is as you can see and then we can decrease the opacity if we want or increase it you know something like that but this is what you can see how that fade distance there is cutting off the wherever the color is showing up you know so it's really interesting so we're just gonna you know decrease that fade distance by quite a bit and the opacity maybe 0 0.6 or something like that increase the fade distance a bit more yeah maybe something like that looks a bit more natural but we've got to control this time period as well so let's do that now okay so back in our material over here we can have a look at the time uh, number we can add a multiply node and connect time to it and then connect this to the add button we now need to add a value in here now normally you could just use a color so let's just try and add a color in here and we can convert this to a parameter call it time control maybe something like that um we're going to connect it over into here and let's just give it a color maybe yeah something like that a yellow or actually i think if we go over here into the default value and put a one 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 that should be an easy number right there so now if we press apply and have a look we can see that we do have a time controller so we can play around with these sort of figures like you see if you go if you go further down to like a black color so it doesn't matter what sort of color you're using what i'm trying to say is like if you go brighter it will move faster if you go darker it will move slower so that's very important for you to understand this right now the idea is also where does it you know in what direction is it moving so you know in theory if you rotate the the, the sphere you're also rotating where the noise is sort of moving towards so that's very important to understand as well uh, so for example you could do i don't know something like this uh something like that yeah and then we can have a look at our density you know maybe do something like that where is it going now so it's kind of going down uh let's just increase our opacity so we can better see it you can see over there the how it's sort of like going into that direction but we could try and you know i'm gonna try and do something like that you know so it's going to the to the right a little bit something like that okay now if we pull this up a bit more we can see it or we could just make it larger something like that now if we increase the density we'll have more of it we can then increase the fade distance as well uh i think if we change the light where the light is sort of like coming from might be able to see a bit more something like that uh, now let's have a look in terms of there is something else that we can add in here uh, for, with the world position offset so we can have a look at doing a previous frame switch um, and then we can connect this color over into the previous frame and then we can have a value of zero into the current frame and connect that into world position offset it's going to press apply like that you can see where sort of the fog is going to i think i'm just going to make it maybe a little bit larger something like that so from this point on you really just need to play around with the settings in here so you know adjust the density the desaturation if you'd like to change the color of this depending on what sort of tint you've set you've got a fade distance from all the meshes around it including the landscape as well you've got an opacity which just adds more to it or less and then again position this uh, you know based on your camera angle and the scale that you'd like but very very important you could still improve the level quality of this noise so if you actually go into this material let me just drag it over here like that so we can see the changes very very clearly if we select the noise over here and then we have a look on the left side we can actually set the scale to maybe like a five and press apply which will give us a far finer scale of the noise itself of how the this particular fog is sort of functioning as you can see it there and then obviously we do want to slow that down so i am going to look to the time control maybe to a 0 0.01 
or maybe even lower if you want to. So this is quite low now. Let me just try, yeah, 0 0.05 is quite nice. So we're going to use that for now. And again, you've got different things in here. Like this is a fast gradient, but you can also have a look at, you know, for example, you can take the turbulence out, which just makes it less turbulent. <laughs> I guess it's in the name. Uh, you've got these sort of things in here where, you know, for example, you can increase the level scale, uh, which if I believe, if I, if I remember correctly, let me just have a look. Yeah, so it does actually, you know, it, it does actually, um, uh, higher, higher values allow efficient use of a few levels. It's saying usually two, but higher values allow. It. So it's, it should, uh, I think it's decreasing the quality the more you increase it. So I think leaving it to two is going to be better. Uh, again, we're using a fast gradient, but you can have a look at more like, you know, uh, complex gradients as well if you really want to. So that should give you better effects. But the idea being that you're trying to reach a, you know, a uh, cinematic quality level quality of uh, of a uh, of an effect. Now, bear in mind that if you go around, normally you wouldn't be able to see the back of this. But if you select the material, you can change it to be a two sided material, which will add a bit of extra cost to the material itself. But I think it's worth it if you plan on having the camera going behind it. But if not, then you can disable that. And again, it's just it's all about positioning. This is a far better way of doing a fog card um, if you're trying to create a bit of a dome-like effect. You know, it's not as flat as a normal fog card. It's got a bit of, um, you know, a, a better variation within it. And again, very important that you play around with the settings. Uh, you can also invert the density, although you can see in here what's happening when I do that um, as well. I'm just going to decrease it a little bit. And as you can see here, it just creates these nice sort of shapes. Um, we can decrease the radius as well, just to have it only in this particular area. Uh, we can also increase the opacity and the fade distance from the meshes. So we get more fog, but we can still see the mesh. So as you can see, we can create some really nice sort of cinematic, a cinematic feel to it if we play around with the settings enough but it's really dependent on your application and what you're going to be doing with it. So I obviously wouldn't know what you're going to do with it. Uh, so yeah, I think I hope you guys uh, enjoyed that and found it useful. I'm, I'm sure I'm, you know, I'll be able to use it in my particular project, so I think you will be able to use it as well.